You're listening to Life with Herpes, and this is episode 51. Hello, hello, hello. I am your host, Alexandra Harbushka, and... I am actually recording this in France. Yeah, I'm in France. I'm in Versailles, France. As you can hear, I have a little bit of a cold. Um, Let me see. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'll hold this up so you can maybe see behind me. Um, It's about, it's 6.30 p.m. here, so people are just leaving work. You can see there's families walking their kids. Um, So there's a lot of fun stuff going on. And then... Let me see if I can show you behind me. You see behind here, right behind, let me move, okay. Where it's kind of shiny um, is Versailles, the palace. So just to give you guys a quick tour, those of you that are listening to this um, in iTunes, I'm sure you can hear the traffic, you can hear the people walking by. So just imagine um, France and You'll have to see my Instagram account. I've been posting so many cute pictures. Um, it's Ale- at Alexandra Harbushka. So anyways, today <laughs> I want to talk to you about traveling to Paris and getting an outbreak and getting a cold. So I'm sure you can hear my voice. I have a little bit of a cold. Um, so I just want to talk to you guys about that, what it's like to really feel like you're doing everything to avoid an outbreak and lo and behold you get it. So I don't know um, if you have traveled across the world or what since you've had herpes or not since having herpes. So without herpes, still traveling across the world, country, wherever you go, is it's stress. It's a lot of stress on your body. And whether you realize it or not, um, your body's kind of in shock it doesn't know where it is. It doesn't know where it's sleeping. It doesn't know its surroundings. You're kind of on alert. Um, your, your entire system's on alert, whether you realize it or not. So let me just kind of walk you through um, my prep time before coming to uh, Paris. I, went, I made sure I took naps the whole week. Uh, I'm a huge nap taker, but I've shied away from that because it's important to get your sleep while you're sleeping, like during the night. So I've shied away from naps, but I made sure that I napped um, the week up to my trip. I went to acupuncture to boost my immune system. I took extra um, herbs and minerals to make sure, again, to make sure that I was uh, really on top of my immune system so that A, I wouldn't get sick and B, I wouldn't get an outbreak. I don't know which one's more important, sick or an outbreak. Regardless, they're both shitty. So um, I felt really strong, really confident going up to this. But, and I took all my vitamins and I had a great meal before getting on the plane. It was actually my dad's birthday. We went up to a really nice dinner, got on the plane, slept. But of course, it's not really a real sleep, right? You're in a chair traveling in a metal tube with the ice, the ice cream, with the, um, it was icy, I'm trying to, I, gosh, my words are all over the place, sorry guys, it was so freezing, so you're like wrapping up in this little blanket and a scarf, and I think that is where it started, right, you're, you don't sleep, so you travel, you don't sleep, I had a connection in Iceland, Iceland, have you, have you guys ever been there? I didn't really know. I know this sounds naive, but like I didn't really think of it as a place of destination. But it's a beautiful country. Um, But I got to Iceland. I wasn't drinking any water. I didn't go to the bathroom from California until Paris. Like that's not healthy, guys. So I wasn't hydrating, um, not really sleeping fully. I was eating good meals. I was taking my vitamins. I, I brought meals on the plane and made sure I ate. But that's what sets it off. So the tone of getting here. And then you get here and you don't really sleep as well because you're jet lagged. So 
And then it takes you a while to figure out, am I eating breakfast? Am I eating lunch? What am I eating? Should I eat now? Should I not eat now? Um, and so those things really, really, really play a huge role on our bodies, whether we realize it or not, right? So really, if you think about it, even though I did my best to sleep, I did my best to put good nourishing food in my body, I still I didn't even drink water. I didn't have to go to the bathroom. That's horrible. That's really, really, really horrible, right? So your body just goes in absolute shock when you travel across country. And I really thought this time I would be kind of nipping it in the bud. Like I said, I, I took extra vitamins. I took naps. I went to acupuncture. I was really on top of it. And lo and behold, I get off the airplane, go to dinner with a friend um, who I'm visiting here. She and I go to dinner, come home, take a shower. I'm in the shower and I go, damn it. I'm getting an outbreak. So I immediately took my antiviral, nipped that in the bud. I really didn't have a severe outbreak. But one of the things, what I'm getting to, is one of the things that you don't realize when you're on vacation, and for those of you that have experienced it, it's almost like you're in a game. It's play. It's like a play. Like it's not your money, it's not your bed, it's not your hours. You wake up at funny hours, it's not your food. I don't speak French. I have no idea what people are saying. Um, I don't know how to read menus. I had to Google every word. You're walking around. Um, hold on, I'm going to take a sip. It's good. Keep my, my whistle, wet my whistle here. But our first day, we walked and walked and walked and walked. We walked 16,000 steps. And I did that all on a bowl of oatmeal. Not realizing that I would do that all on a bowl of oatmeal. Um, but you just keep walking. And so my point is, is I didn't feel the symptoms. I didn't feel the symptoms of, you know, I was fatigued, which is normally an outbreak symptom. But I was in Paris, so I just assumed I was fatigued because I had just traveled across the, the, the world, you know. Um, my throat started to hurt, but I was like, oh, it's because I'm so tired that my throat's hurting. So all those little warning signs that our body typically gives us, and for you it might be something different. I'm also talking about outbreaks and a cold, um, but we have little, little uh, warnings. Like you get hungry and your, your stomach grumbles. Well, when you're in another country and you're on a different time zone and you're just walking, 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 your stomach like forgets to get hungry. Um, you forget to get thirsty. You like your body just goes into the survival mode. So I put my body in survival mode for so many days. Got through the outbreak. That was gone. Uh, went away. Went away in like two days. Never even noticed it. Was not even a big deal. And lo and behold, two nights ago, I was like, "Fuck, I'm getting sick." And I boil it down to the outbreak. Right? When you have an outbreak, your body is on alert. It is trying to heal itself. It is like, fix the outbreak, fix the outbreak, fix the outbreak. And it's not focusing on my sore throat or a runny nose or the fact that some little other virus got in here and is making me sick. Right? And so I just, I, I ignored it. And I take full responsibility for ignoring it. I full, take full responsibility for not getting on the time zone and not taking extra vitamin C once I got here. All of that fun stuff. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, have you experienced this? This is really my first time. Every time I travel, I typically get an outbreak. Um, for whatever reason, it is what it is. Let me reframe that. Every time I travel uh, on an airplane, so basically switching time zones, um, I get an outbreak. And However, I don't get colds. Um, I haven't had a cold in forever. So, um, this was my, this is one of the, the, uh, triggers that we have to be mindful of once we get outbreaks is our immune system is like, fuck you, you just put me through hell and I can't protect everything. And here you are running all over Paris and it's cold and it's raining and then it's hot one day at 75 the other day, and you're in cashmere, and you're sweating, and it just couldn't figure out what to do. Um, so I don't know if you have these triggers, or when you get outbreaks, if you get a cold, um, or what happens. This is my first time actually getting a cold while getting an outbreak. Now, I also have never 
had a cold and then gotten an outbreak. So I've been lucky to get them separate. This is my first time, I believe, getting a cold that is a result from the outbreak. But maybe not. Um, but yeah, I mean, my body should not be in this much stress that I put it through. Even though I thought I was doing everything right, guys. I packed like little, I packed jerky, I packed crackers, I packed all the little like nummies for the plane so I wouldn't get hungry, all sorts of stuff because you never know what they serve on planes. So anyways, this was just more of me telling my story of what's going on right now um, in Paris, which I'm now in Versailles. Um, just to give you a little history lesson, Versailles is about 12 miles out of Paris. So it's pretty close to the city. Um, it's a it's a beautiful little, it's a city as well. It's not obviously anything like a big metropolitan city like Paris, but it is very sweet to see families walking around. Um, it's so funny because on Sundays, everything closes. There's nothing open. And it was like, so... My, I'm here with my girlfriend, Marissa, and we realized at 1 o'clock that the, the farmer's market closed at 2, and there was nothing else open. So if we didn't make it to the farmer's market, there was no dinner, there was nada. So it's just, it's been such a fun um, experience to like run to the farmer's market, then try and buy stuff, and you don't speak the language, and so you're like, how much is this, or what, what am I buying? I don't know what this is. Um, it's just been fun. And then today, all the restaurants are also closed. Um, so it's just it's just a funny um, experience. So you'll have to go check out my Instagram, at Alexandra Harbush Guy. That's my personal Instagram. Um, I have one for Life with Herpes as well. Um, but that's just my personal one. So it's it's I've had a really fun time here. So I just wanted to kind of share with you. Like, I, I got a cold, and it sucks. Having a cold really sucks. But I'm hoping if this is my cold for the season, that I'm done. This is my hope that I won't get another cold. Kind of you get one and then you're good for the rest of the year is my hope. Especially since I'm getting married in a month. Like less than a month. I'm getting married. So hopefully I won't get sick again. All right, guys. I am just rambling and rambling and rambling and rambling. So I am going to go. Um, the garbage men are staring at me like, what is this girl doing? It's been really funny to watch people stare as they as I walk they walk by like what is this girl talking about what is she doing so anyways um, if you have not joined our group join it it's awesome it is free f r e e go to lifewithherpes.com sign up say hi join our Slack group there is a lot going on in there check it out um, join it I'm also doing ooh I can smell the garbage now. Ugh. Um, I'm also doing some coaching, which was requested by you, so I am listening to what you have to say. It is uh, so rewarding and so fun to be able to connect and, you know, help you with your dirty little secret, help you um, break through, help you uh, just have someone to talk to. It is uh, wonderful to be able to share those conversations with you. All right, my friends, I am going to peace out. I am going to go, I think I'm going to walk down to the palace, I'm going to do that, maybe record another episode, and call it a day. All right, have a wonderful rest of your day, my friends. Bye.